Hey, how's it going everybody? I'd like to thank you for watching this. I'm going to show you how to set up the current EverQuest Online Adventures emulator on one computer. So first off, um, you're going to have to set up your client. Um, I'm not really going to go over this all that much because I feel like this page does a very good job and it's it's pretty trivial, trivial this stuff. It's pretty easy getting the client set up. Um, so just so you know, if you have any problems with it, the client setup, just come here. This is the way to do it. Um, but yeah, you're going to need, obviously, um, the way I'm doing this, I'm doing this on Windows 8.1 host, and I'm going to be running Windows 7 inside of a virtual box. So if you're going to need to get an, uh, another ISO of uh, Windows 7, if you're already, uh, and obviously I'm not going to tell you how to do that. Um, so first thing first, you're going to need the newest virtual box for Windows. Grab that, download that. Download the extension pack too. You're gonna to need that. Uh, you're also gonna need the link here. This isn't really shared yet because this was just released. But here's the uh, the link for the the latest uh, testing server. But yeah, so you're gonna install your VirtualBox. That's a, it's a pretty quick install. When you're installing it, you're gonna to need to res reset your networking settings for uh, very quickly. Just because it's got a, it's got to set up like the bridging and stuff for that. Just so you know, but yep, um, to set up your new thing, first thing first, when you uh, you when you start up uh, VirtualBox, go over here into File, Preferences, go to your Extensions, install install your extension pack. Do that first thing first before you uh, start messing around. But then you're gonna want to go over here to New. Just name it Windows 7. It'll it should automatically detect it and set it to 64-bit. Um, if you start this up and you're only seeing 32 bits, that's because you don't have virtualization enabled. You're gonna have to go into your BIOS settings and enable virtualization. And um, if you go in there and you see that virtualization is enabled and you're still only seeing 32-bit, you're gonna wanna go in and disable Hyper-V. That's just, uh, that's like the Windows uh, version of uh, virtualization and you don't wanna use that. That uh, causes some issues. So yeah, you're gonna want to go and set it to Windows 7 64-bit. Go to next. Oh, I've got already got it named that. Then go to next. Uh, depending on how much RAM you have, set it to an appropriate amount. I have uh, I have 16 gigs, which is quite a bit. Um, I seem to just set this to 4096. If you're running uh, eight gigs or more of RAM, just set it to that amount. That seems to be a, a, a good spot. Uh, create the virtual hard drive now. Just set it regular virtual virtual box disk image. Dynamically located. That just means that um, the folder will grow in size as necessary. It'll only take up as much room as it needs. So like if you if you're only using you know 15 gigs out of your 25 gigs, you're gonna set here. It'll only use what it needs. Um, just just in case. Set this like 40. Just in case. Then create the folder. Don't start up quite yet. Go in and set some things first. Um, just get rid of floppy. You don't need that. For your first boot, you're going to want to set that to C CD DVD. That's just uh, because you're going to run the ISO first. Once you get Windows installed and everything, just power it down and reset the uh, hard disk to the first thing is the boot order. But then you're going to want to go over to processor. For while you're installing it, set the processor for two. After you're done installing it, you can set it back down to one. Leave uh, enable that. That'll uh, that's uh, some minor speed ups. Go over here, bump that to 128. Enable your 3D acceleration. Um, there's no need to enable that up back up to 256. It's just we don't need that for what we're doing. Go over here, and this is where you set the uh, the ISO. Set that up for Windows 7. Audio, you can get rid of. We don't need that. It's just going to slow you down. Uh, networking, take that off of net, set it to a bridged adapter. You want to set that to uh, your networking device, and you can go over here and just uh, allow all in promiscuous mode just in case. But that's that's all the setup for that. You're going to want to start this up. Install, uh, just install Windows 7. Just It's a regular old install. Um, once you get it started up, um, here, I've already got it running, so I'll just go in there and show you. I'll get rid of this. Let's 
So once you got Windows 7 up and running, first thing you're going to want to do, go over here, go in your control panel, and just disable system updates. It's, they're, they're, it's crazy slow, especially if you're, you're running this all on one hard drive. It's, it's going to take forever to run the updates, so just get rid of it. You don't need them. Um, you're also going to want to go in to your networking settings and set up a static IP address. So go in here, right click on this bad boy, go to properties, unclick IPv6. You don't need that. It's just going to cause issues. Perhaps, actually, I don't even know if it will. We just, we disable that just in case. Go to your IPv4 settings. Um, you can probably just copy what I'm using. Just check to make sure that uh, this is the address for your router. If it's not, it might be 192.168.0.1. So you're just going to want to check that. Everything else should be uh, the same. Same for this. Make sure that this one is set to your uh, your router's IP address. And in here, this is just Google's DNAs address, just in case. But then that'll be all good. And then um, lastly, you're going to want to go in, insert your guest editions, see the image, and install those. That'll give you some more capabilities. You can uh, link folders in between you know, your two different operating systems, drag and drop, shared clipboard. Uh, there's a lot of cool stuff you can do with that. But uh, it, there's also a lot of there's uh, speed ups, so you're going to want to do that. So yeah, insert the guest CD image, run that. You'll need to restart after that. I've already got that done, so I'm not going to do it. Next thing next, you're going to need all of the different packages for the server stuff. That's all over here on the wiki page. Everything you need, all the links, all the descriptions on how to use this stuff. It's all over there. I'm just giving you a little video showing you how to do it. Uh, first thing you're going to want to run, DNS catcher. That's going to reroute always with this stuff too. The first time you're going to run this, go into properties, do this for every all of these programs, set, set it as an administrator. You always want to run server stuff as administrator. So yep, and then run that as administrator, copy what I've got set up right here. It's just, the name is patch.everquestonlineadventures.com. Use all these same settings. Start that up. It's a great, great little program. Then you're going to need to set up the file system. So you're going to need a HFS file server, and you're going to need the patch folder. Same thing, start that up as administrator. And just so you know, the first time you start this stuff up, it's going to ask you if you want to enable the stuff for uh, to go through your uh, your firewall and just let it go through just on your home your home uh, settings. For this, you need to set this up like this. Change the port to 7000. That's not uh, the native setup. Leave it in expert mode just so you can see traffic and stuff like that coming in and out, just in case this is the problem. To set up this folder, you're going to want to go over here, right click on this guy, add a folder from disk, pick the patch server, hit OK. It's going to ask you if you want to create a real folder or a virtual folder. Create a virtual folder. And once that's set up, that'll be in there. Go to save file system, save file system. Then once you load this up every time, it'll remember these files. So you don't have to keep adding them. Drop that boy down. Then you're going to need to set up the TCP packet sender. This is what gets you through uh, the log, the account login screen. So this is, um, seems to time out on me pretty quickly. So that's why when I made the video I just went through and I didn't put in a name or anything I just I hit a uh, login just as quickly as I could just because it times out really quickly and then if you don't get it right away you have to wait 60 seconds or sometimes it didn't even work again and I had to restart over so just make sure you log into that fast um, the hex code that you're gonna want in there that's over here on the server setup page under TCP packet sender copy that whole response right there and then you add that under the hex right there. Um, every time you start this up, it sets the TCP server port back to the right, this right here. So you're going to want to set this to 9735 every single time you run it. All right.
the last thing you're going to need to run, obviously, is the actual emulator, uh, server emulator program itself. Um, so, uh, like I showed you here, this is the link. This is where you're going to get this stuff. This includes the uh, the source code, and it's uh, it's already compiled into Windows 32-bit. So, um, I'll show you what you got to do for that. Just You just have to set up the files for it. So this is how the download's going to come when you get it. You're just going to want to take this and drop it into this folder. Um, there, you're going to if you drop the DLL into the other into the source code in here, it's going to give you problems, tr problems, tr problems. So there you go. Drop that in there. I ended up moving the folders around just so it's all uh, organized better under here. Named it Eko Amu. So then um, to run this, you're going to need to um, you use command prompt. Start up your command prompt. You might need to search that. It's not normally in the in the programs. Run that as administrator. So you're gonna need to know a little bit of the command prompt. I'll show you. The, you only need to know a couple commands for this. Uh, so first thing first, uh, cd change directory. You're gonna want to set that to. Uh, here I'll show you how to map that to the desktop. So that would be cd slash users slash whatever the name, whatever you gave your virtual machine, the name of it, I named mine um, John Win 7 vm and then slash desktop. Then once you get to the desktop, if you want to see like what files you have out here and stuff, just hit, just hit dir, and that sh that'll show you all the folders and stuff again. And then once you see like, uh, you got the folder names there. So say I want to go into EQA server, cd slash EQA server. Oh, whoops. Case sensitive. Don't do that. Oh, whoops. No, that, that wasn't the problem. I, I don't need the slash. So not case sensitive. Just don't put the slash in there. The slash is only for um, coming down from the root directory. And then once I'm in EQA server, then CD EQAMU to get into that folder. And now I'm going to actually run the program. This is how you run the program. EQAMU.exe. Then it's going to ask you what IP address you're using and what port you're using. For the code that we have right now, it's all hard-coded to that 112 IP address. So you go EQA mu.exe 192.168.1.112 and the port you're using is 1070 10,070 <laughs> and now that's going to that's running it's waiting for packets to be sent to it I'll just show you the show you that this is all working now start this bad boy up fast Again, I'm going to leave all of the all of these links here. I'm going to leave these right in the video for this, so you guys will have all that stuff. If you got any questions, just leave a link here. Go over to the go over to the Facebook pages. I'll help you out with the folders. Um, you need to change all the IP addresses in there to the 112 as well. He shows you how to do that right in here. On this page, just manually edit the memory card. It's really not that hard. You just gotta extract the files, open them up in Notepad++, search for um. Actually, I think the the modded memory card files that he's giving us actually already come with this address in there. So you just need to add add these files into uh, your uh, your Bazless EQI online folder then pop that back in with uh into the actual the memory card with my mc but let's see this should be running yep there through the dnas check through the patching screen right here i'm just gonna this is where i'm gonna do it quick don't want to time out don't waste your time there
there you go, and that's a little HTML file just shows you some text. You can go and change that if you want to. That's just that's in, located in the uh, patching server files. And actually, it doesn't even seem to use actual HTML. It was just it's an it, it's an HTML file that with just plain text in it. Well, let's see. Now this is the actual C program now running, getting you right here. He named this Ben Turi. Get in that bad boy. There you go. This is as far as we can get right now. Everybody, get in here. Start hacking away. Let's get the get this in. But, but yeah, thanks everybody for watching. You got any questions? Just uh, leave a comment down here, over on the Facebook, whatever you want to do. We'll we'll help you out. Get this running.